everybody's like, dinosaurs are cool, but why would I want to pay somebody to research a dinosaur like Triceratops that we already know everything about? The fact is, we don't know everything about them. This specimen here is one that I found in 2015, and it's the most exciting middle half of a Triceratops that I've ever seen. Going through all the bones, there's all kinds of weird lesions and stuff in the bone, and it looks like this animal was bitten by a T-Rex, got a staph infection, a bloodborne infection back in the Cretaceous, survived the attack for like two or three or four weeks, and then just died of its disease after that. Just coming up with these stories of these animals is really exciting. I spend a lot of time living out of my tent finding these new animals. When we bring the specimens back to the lab, that's when it gets really interesting. I have all these Dremel bits and Dremel tools that I use for cleaning up jackets, trimming them down so that we can get to the fossils themselves, and then we'll slowly clean off all of the rock that's on the surface of the bone, all the while looking for really cool things like feathers or skin impressions, any sort of pathologies like damage that happened to this animal back when it was alive. When you walk into a museum and you see something that's mounted on display, most of our business is supplying those cast dinosaurs to other institutions. We pour all these specimens. You've worked on model kits when you were a kid. They all have these little trim lines, these flashing lines and stuff like that. Multiply that by an 80 foot long apatosaurus with 300 bones. We use months of Dremel time just cleaning it so that we can go ahead and then assemble them, paint it up, and give it off to our customers, scientists, and the public all across the world. Finding the dinosaurs, looking at the ground and seeing the story that it tells, it always evolves. Because when we clean it up, we see things that we don't see in the field. We never saw the bite mark on Princess Lumpy Bump's frill from whatever Tyrannosaur attack. With uh, Eric the Halfatrike, we had no idea this thing survived a Rex attack and died of a staph infection. We only saw those when we brought it back to the lab and cleaned it up and were able to look at it in detail. A lot of the curiosity comes from when you look at an animal besides just the one animal. I mean, we have ecosystems now, they had ecosystems then. What I want to do is try to figure out how these animals interacted with each other, if there's a story behind it and piecing it slowly together. <laughs>